two minutes, someone around the world is diagnosed with melanoma. Every 10 minutes, someone dies from the disease. It's the world's fastest growing cancer, and it disproportionately affects younger people. But the real tragedy is that the vast majority of the people who die from this disease could have been prevented. I'm going to spend the next few minutes telling you how I believe we can best do that. But first, let's start with a complicated disease and try and make it as simple as possible. Let's think about melanoma in two ways. What happens before you seek help and what happens after you seek help. And after you seek help is when you go in to see your doctor or your dermatologist and they diagnose you and identify a treatment plan for you. And by and large, we're actually pretty good at this. Doctors have a lot of experience, they've done a lot of training to understand how to make these diagnostic decisions. So when you seek help, you generally get the right answer quickly. And the treatment that they identify for you is based entirely on the stage of the disease when they find it. So if you can find the disease when it's in stage one, the survival rate is great, and the option for treatment is simple as cutting it out. It takes five minutes. But as that disease starts to grow and the cancer spreads throughout your body, the survival rate plummets, and your treatment options suddenly become radiotherapy and chemotherapy. So as I see it, we have two possible ways to try and improve the survival rate for melanoma. Firstly, we can improve the late-stage cancer treatments. And we do this by continuing to invest in rocket science researchers to come in and apply their great thoughts and drive innovative new solutions. We can get the latest drug therapies, the latest approaches, and we can make sure that more people survive cancer. And we're pretty good at doing that. In the last couple of years, there have been a few new cancer drugs that have come onto the market focused specifically on melanoma. And I even went to a talk a few weeks ago that was talking about 3D printing viruses that would target specifically melanoma cells. And that future is probably not as far away as we would have thought it was a few years ago. But if you look at that graph, we've got such a long way to go to make sure that people in the later stages of melanoma survive in the way that we want them to. So what's the other solution? Well, if we look at that graph again, it's pretty obvious that if you can find the disease in stage one, the survival rates are as high as 97%. So why don't we focus our efforts on making sure that every single person who gets in to see their doctor does so when their melanoma is in stage one? Clearly, that's going to have a significant impact to the survival rate. But how do we do that? Well, to understand that a little bit better, let's go back to where we started. Now let's think about what happens before you seek help. We can define this time as the time it takes for you to start to worry about a lesion to the time that you go to the doctor and ask for your diagnosis. The researchers would call this patient delay, and there's been a number of studies into it over the years, and what's clear is that it's generally between 6 and 18 months for melanoma. And when you compare that 6 to 18 month delay into the total time it takes to treat the disease, so from when you first worry about it right the way through to when you finish treatment, it turns out that that delay makes up 90% of the total time to treat the disease. So just a second ago, we identified that early detection was the single most effective thing that we can do to prevent melanoma deaths. And at the same time, we can see the data to show that the biggest delay in getting people into the doctor and treating the disease happens between our ears before we decide to go and see a doctor. So to me, that seems like an obvious place to start. What do we do about that? And what's driving this? Well, as with many things in life, I think it begins with education. So I'm originally from Australia, and we lead the world in skin cancer, specifically melanoma, mostly in growing them. We have a rate three times higher than anyone else in skin cancer. And we've been investing in something else, though. We're leaders in education. We spent 30 years telling people about the dangers of UV exposure and what to look out for cancer. And we use campaigns like this one. And we recently did a 20-year review of how effective this campaign was. And what we saw is that these education campaigns have a dramatic effect on skin cancer. So while incidence in Australia is still doubling every 10 years, like it is in many other parts of the world, what we're seeing is that the mortality rate from the disease is staying relatively flat. So education has a key role to play in making sure that no one dies from melanoma. But there is still a delay 
in patients seeking help in Australia. So there's something else going on here. And what is it? Well, that's when we start getting into the difficult world. We're trying to work out what's going in people's, on in people's minds before they seek help. And here it's really complicated, but I believe if you take a behavioral psychological view of it, what we're missing is the trigger for people to take action. So when you start to worry about your mole, what makes you go in and see the doctor? There's very few symptoms at this stage. And I think what we need to do is start focusing on giving people the tools for them to be able to find out what's wrong with them. And those tools can act as the trigger to get people into the doctor sooner. So I started a company with this in mind. And the idea behind my company is that not only can we help identify the people who need to go to the doctor, but we can help manage the healthcare system workflow so that not everyone who has a mole can, needs to panic and go in and see the doctor and flood our healthcare system. So we built a very simple service. It runs using just a smartphone and a low-cost low dermoscopic attachment. And the idea behind this service is you simply attach the attachment to the phone, and you can use a very simple data collection app to take a photograph of the lesion that you're worried about. So here's one I'm going to take on my hand. So if we capture an image, live demos, they're always a bit nerve-wracking. So here we are, we've taken a photograph now. This is being uploaded into the cloud, and what we're doing is we're doing exactly what a dermatologist would do. We're looking at this mole, and we're evaluating a whole range of features to try and identify risk for melanoma. And once we get the results back, we can identify whether or not we need to take action. So here are the results, very slowly loading up, show that this is a normal mole and that I don't need to take any action. And that's very powerful in itself because it means that I don't have to worry about this anymore. And anxiety is a big problem that we need to overcome when it comes to education campaigns about potential risky things like melanoma. But it also serves another purpose. So if this had come back and told me that I had something to worry about, it would be the trigger to get me to go and see the doctor. And that's what I think is really important. Because if that's not enough on its own, when it tells me that I have something I need to worry about, I also have a, a communication channel through this app. I can call up that person and say, have you been to the doctor yet? Have you seen someone about this? And we can use this as a way to reduce the time it takes someone to seek help from that 18 months down to just a single day. Now, we've got a lot of work left to do on this before we can bring it into the market. We're doing a clinical study later this year. But it's not about this tool. It's about the power that we have in our hands now with these sorts of technologies. It's about the ability to understand what's stopping people seeking help for a variety of different problems, including melanoma. And it's about building those tools so that we can get people into the help that they need. So I passionately believe that we can make a real difference in melanoma. But to make that difference, we need to continue to find these rock star researchers. We need to give them the resources that they need to come up with these innovative next stage, late stage cancer treatments. We also need to continue to invest in education. We need to make sure that people know the dangers of UV exposure. We need to make sure that people understand the risk that they need to look out for on their, their moles and their lesions. But above that, we need to start taking advantage of the technology we have. We need to make sure that people use services and tools to act as the trigger to get people to take that step into the doctor's surgery and find the right people to get them in there. And if we can do that, then we can show that every single person in the world has a role to play that's as important and as valuable as those cancer researchers. And together we can make sure that nobody dies from melanoma. Thank you.